Hello, hello. And welcome back to Phoenix Wright. Trials and Tribulations. You dareth bonketh me, surf hat viking. How are you doing? I hope you had a good weekend. Let's jump right back in. We're in the investigation of the... Th yeah, episode 3. I think I already talked with her with everything, didn't I? Yeah. Whenever I play a game, my left hand immediately goes W, A, S, and D. Little finger on shift, spa uh, thumb on space. Present profiles. Um, do you have anything specific to say about yourself, maybe? You worked all weekend? I'm sorry. Call that the gamer's oath. <laughs> Alright, so positive, aren't you, Maggie? Match a Maggie bird, they say. The early bird catches the worm, a bird in the hand. Wow, all those phrases are named after you? And I never turn my back on anything. You're always so strong, aren't you, Maggie? Macho Maggie bird, they say. I'm a tough old bird. Tough old bird, Nick. Hee <laughs> hee, do you get it? Yes, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Okay, let's... Is Gumshoe here? No. Anything new here? No. Let's go back here then, because we ought to move here to go to Trabian. Oh, 6th January, Trabian. Oh la la, bonjour, welcome to La Trebienne. Oh, hello? What happened to Maya? She's frozen stiff. Oh god. Oh what? Bienvenue, welcome to my petite restaurant. Huh? B Avenue? My god. Oh, not my petite tulip. Huh? Me? Look at his face. Like like kitten rejected by its own mother. You are fatigued, no? Hello, you need this? An aromatic bath oil melange of La Neroli and La Rose? My personal recommendation. Oh god, I don't know if I can keep this accent up. You think I need what? Wee oui, wee, oui. just add a couple of drops of this mixture to la bath water and voila. Sir, keep returning away from me and my assistant. It will soothe your body and your mind. It's simply fantastic. Really? And for la monsieur? Who? Me? Look at that face. Like that puppy rejected by life itself. He hello, Toxie. How are you doing? This is how you do a French accent, Toxie. Just, just read what he says, how it's written, and there you go. I hope you're well. Uh, for you, monsieur, I recommend this. Oil of... Bergamot, Bergamot, and uh, maybe a hint of wee oui wee. Oui. I'll add la peppermint and la clary sage for a fragrance exceptionnel. Such, <laughs> such an invigorating recipe will bring out your delicious beauty, Monsieur. M my beauty. Just finished your Mass Mas Effect Three insanity run. How'd it go? Alors, if you'll be seated, I will bring you a special menu of the day. Actually, we're not here to eat. We're lawyers. Maybe and sure I know this already, monsieur. You are the Phoenix Wright, no? Um, yes, you know me. May we, oui, we, oui, I never forget a man who flirts with, <laughs> with me, especially in court. I guess he was cross examined by a mysterious Zen. King of Fury, mouthy Tim Dead by not giving Garrus the typhoon. Okay, sure, I fucked up. Looks like everyone to do with this case already knows who I am already. What well, sort of impressions Zin Yope's been on people been leaving on people, don't you? Allow me to introduce myself to you again. I am Jean Armstrong, Enchanté. This man terrors me in a level deeper than my soul. <laughs> Just a visceral fear reaction. Okay, sure. Um Let's talk. Trebian. So what does Trebian mean? I know Trey, that means three. N no. No, no, no. Trebian is Francais. In English, you would say very good. More like viscera. I can feel my organs trying to escape. <laughs> is it really that bad? Oh, very good. We oui, exactement. La atmosphere is Trebian, and la cuisine is Trebian. 
But the food's so good, why aren't there any customers in here? Maybe because there's a fucking murder phoenix? My cuisine is not for all. Some people, they do not appreciate la haute cuisine. I thought everyone liked hot cuisine. Since I have lost Maggie, I don't have enough hands. So you're running this place on your own now? Oui, for le moment. No one has answered my advertisement. Oh, poor moi. Please don't eyeball me while you say that. Where is Asti? I want Asti's reaction to this. I am le chef. I am le manager. I am also a trained aromatherapist. Aroming what? A practitioner d'aromatherapy. La art of soothing le soul with the delicate floral aromas. Delicate? The smell coming from that bottle earlier was anything but. Okay, what happened? So you can tell me what you know about the incident. Oh gods, no. <laughs> Bien, it makes me sad to remember it, yet I remember it so well. More than a month has passed since it happened. Then the crime scene is still there a month later. Yeah, I guess it's been about a month since Maggie's sentencing. So it was the third of last month, just after one in the after. This throws me off my um stride. A man who was in here for a coffee suddenly became ill because of the poison in his co oh because of the poison in his coffee. That is the truth as I know it. It was Maggie who took his drink to him. I was in that kitchen. I heard the sound of someone collapsing. When I came out to see what it was, he was already slumped in his chair. He was dead? Mon Dieu, oui, he was dead. Maggie had passed out also. And this man who died, was he alone? Oui, monsieur. Uh, oui, monsieur, all alone. I know that Maki said there was someone else, but... I see. That police, they asked me many ta many times. Are you sure there was no one else at the table? They asked. But I'm not the only one. La old man said the same thing. Old man? What old man? Let's talk about this old man. Um, so who was this old man that you mentioned? At the time of the murder, there was another customer in here. What? Someone else saw it? May we, as usual, he came alone that day. At the time of the murder, he was here, he saw it too. But he says the same thing, that there was no one else at the victim's table. But Maggie swears there were two people. May, mademoiselle, the lawyer, he could not prove this, no? About the lawyer, that was me, I suppose. May be and sure. Ow, he's the first- wow, he's the first person who's said it wasn't me. Don't kid yourself, Nick. Now who's the one making stuff up? You don't like the whole titty shake? Please, monsieur. There is no need to show me that. You are m Monsieur Phoenix Wright is the worst, the worst defense attorney in town. I can imagine how he formed this completely wrong impression of me. Um, the last time we met, did I show you this badge? We, oui, you flashed to everyone in the restaurant. You feel your eyes melting. Looks like Zinniope is a bigger fan of flashing stuff than you are, Nick. Magazine clipping. I am not a lawyer myself. I do not wish to speak out of turn, but your defense in courts that day was a little, how you say, lacking, perhaps? Sigh. Even a Frenchman who cannot speak any English could have done a better job. You were very cool, though. Oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. So handsome. Wow, I wonder how bad the defense could have been. Every time you opened your mouth, the old courthouse stirred. Oh, man, that is something I don't want to imagine. We found this sports paper in the magazine rack here. One of my customers must have left it behind. Do you have any idea which customer it was? It's the only idea I have, mademoiselle, I save for my kit- I- only ideas I have, mademoiselle, I save for my kitchen. Okay. <laughs> I wanna keep doing that just to- just to kill Fat Viking Soul. Oh la la, you have such a pretty smile, my petite chulie. Who, me? Oui, the smile is the most important thing for us girls, n'est-ce pas? Um, sure. If you want a job here, it is yours, precious. Okay, Mia Fey. Mon Dieu, what beauty. That's my sister. She's dead. Ah, oui, another delight. 
But you have a certain je ne sais quoi that I do not sense from your sister. I do. So throw your head eye. Thrust out your feminine features. Oh, what? Please don't want to separate my body, soul, and mind into three separate beings. Do not lose art, ma fille. Ma fille. You are a woman. A woman extraordinaire. Do I look like I need cheering up or something? Mm, good job. How about this? Felicitation. Me. Que se que se. Que. Que. Que se que se. Sorry, I used to do French ages ago, and I always got caught up in this. Que se que se. I think. Ac, um, je, je no come. Freehand. Nick, don't just make something up. Uh, gumshoe? Okay, that's not nothing. Maggie. Maggie was a policewoman once, ne sais pas? Yes, but she had to quit for, um, reasons beyond her control. Oui, oui. She was the suspect in a murder investigation, no? Oh, you know about that? That is why I gave her la perfume for la happiness. Happiness perfume? We oui, lemon from Bergamo, like I have given to you before. But she's been arrested again and found guilty this time. This is true. Her natural aroma of unhappiness must have been very strong. Just admit it, your perfume doesn't work. I am not surprised she was the prime suspect, after something like that took place before my very eyes. Something like what? What's this guy talking about? Does this mean Maggie did have a motive? We've got to ask this guy for more info to start. How to go through. It is hard to imagine, I know, but I was an apprentice for five years in Le Gay Paris. Wow, in Paris? It was something Le Chef Zara said to me that made me decide to open my own restaurant. What was it? That awful man said to me, you must train for another ten years. Oh, it was such a shock, so unexpected. But you would have been a fool to do this, no? Okay. Maggie's motive. When Maggie took the coffee over to the victim, did anything happen? Oui, oui, I I suppose you could say so. But what happened? No, it was uh, it was nothing. Look, Maggie says she didn't even know the guy, but she's still been indicted for murder. The prosecution must have come up with some kind of motive. We, oui, it is true. If there was anything at all between Maggie and the victim, it could be relevant. So please, tell us anything you know. Oh? Three locks? Yes. Psych locks? No way, what are you gonna do, Nick? I just have to remove... What the? Well, what's wrong? The Magatama. Gone. Huh? I had it in my pocket, but... It's vanished into thin air. What? But I could see the psych locks. That means the Magatama's nearby? Um, Mr. Armstrong, could I just confirm something with you again? The table where the victim was sitting. Was anyone else sitting there? That is a question you would have to ask him yourself. Huh? Im? That old man spends all of his time dans le parc? Le parc? Oh, a park? What park's that? Behind le restaurant? It is called Vitamin Square? Thank you. Je vous en prie, my dear. Let's go check out this vitamin square right now, Nick. Okay. So it must still be nearby. I'm on French. Um. Yeah. Let's see if there's anything new about the Magatama anywhere around here. It could be in the park. And uh, nothing new there. Nothing new there. I'm trying to look for if it's anywhere. I don't think so. I have no more Magatama, that's unfortunate. Let's go to the park. Oh, I see what they mean. So this is Vitamin Square. Yeah, I see where they get the name from now. The fruits scream vitamins at you. Hey, Nick. That's the guy, right? Isn't that the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? That grouchy looking grandpa? He's throwing seeds out for the pigeons. Yeah, you don't don't throw bread or rice out for, for birds. It expands and damages their stomach, can kill them. 
Maya, he's not throwing scenes for them, he's throwing scenes at them. The fuck? Ugh, my grumpiness threat level has just been raised to red. No, nope. first... We examine everything. I used to love sandboxes like you wouldn't believe. Really? You? Sure. Finding iron fillings in the sand with a magnet was my favorite thing to do. I oh, filings. Iron filings? Wow, that's too exciting for words. It was my ambition to collect every shred of iron in the sandbox. I was such a kid back then. So, did you manage to get all the iron? No, I never did. I think it came close, though. Come to think of it, I still have all the iron filings I found way back then. You want them? N n no. <laughs> this place is so fruity. That's not a bad thing. Besides, I love apples. They're among my favorites. And that apple slide is perfect for you. And what is so perfect about it? Oh, come on. Don't be a stick in the mud. Slide down it a few times. Go on. Woo. I, I totally would. No way. I get covered in sand if I slid down that slide. Anyone can see that. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, I'd give it a try too. Oh, there's a magazine here. It might be full of job listings. You disgusting rogue picking up something someone else threw away. Threw away? Did you throw this away? Are you looking for a job? Yeah, that's none of your business. So sorry, I guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Give it back. Too bad. Now that you want it so bad, I don't want to give it up. This guy. <laughs> Thrown away by the old man. Hey, that's mine. Yeah, just straight up theft. Looking at this orange reminds me. Of what? They're supposed to eat a lot of them when, to ward off colds in the winter. You can't have fun during the holidays if you're sick in bed, you know. Yeah, for the past few winters I've been sick with COVID and flus and stuff. How are you doing, Colsta, by the way? Uh, I can't remember if I asked it already. You don't have to tell me twice. Uh, you already did that. Hey, look! Pigeons! Still absolutely exhausted, I'm sorry. Yeah, and heaps of them too. Do you know that pigeons are a symbol of peace? That's a dove, not a pigeon. Isn't a pigeon a kind... Isn't a dove, like, in the same family as pigeons? Poor things. So they can't be symbols of peace and harmony just because they're grey? Is that it? You're overthinking this by one by just a smidge, Maya. Sky rats. Nothing else? Okay. Can I examine this? No. Let's talk. What you saw. Um, excuse me. Would you mind if I had a word with you? Yes. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? He's literally throwing seeds at me. You don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? He's really chucking those seeds at them. That's gotta hurt. Go on, eat this. Sigh. Excuse me, sir, can I ask you about Maggie Bird? I don't know any Maggie Bird. Yes, you do. Maggie, the wages of trade began. Ka, it's a disgrace, I tell you. Another disgrace. A uh, disgrace? An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Revealing? You mean her uniform? The youth of today, they don't have any shame. No shame, I tell you. Not one ounce, you say, throwing seeds at birds. Whatever happened to the old Bushido Valleys of Japan, like honor and modesty? Well, what about me? I'm not wearing anything revealing. You? Your problem is you lack any sense of grace. Talk about hitting a girl where it hurts. Uh, okay, Trabian. Do you go to Trabian a lot? Hmm, that miserable excuse for a restaurant. That garbage they serve and there's not food. Where's the sushi? The tempura? The rice? Trabian is a French restaurant, sir. Where do you think we are, boy? In Paris. I want real food. Not those any snacks. Yeah, so this is the, the argument that it's it's Japanifornia. In, um... In San Fran, Tokyo. What about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up to there. There. Yes, the waitresses. They're practically naked. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my restaurant. Cut. It's a miracle to choose for a restaurant. That place miserable. He certainly knows the place. He must be a regular. But if he hates it so much, why does he keep going? Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? It's just, if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons. You want food? Haha, <laughs> take that. 
Must be hiding something, right? If he is, should be able to see a Cyclock or two. Oh, wait. I don't exactly have the Magatama right now, huh? Remember, Nick, the Magatama's only on loan. You better find it or else. If Pearl's ever gets wind of this, I'm going to be in a world of pain. Okay, let's start showing all our evidence. Um, excuse me, sir, could you- could I ask you about this? Yeah, that's... Okay, so that's the, his I don't know t text. One, what's wrong with his nose? Clearly he has a cold and keeps rubbing it so it's getting inflamed. Why does he keep bouncing it? Because he's rubbing it. That's the nothing. And that's the nothing. Okay, profiles. That's nothing. Clown looking ass. Okay, nothing. Nope. Uh, just for the sake of completion. Yeah, nothing. And... Nothing. Move, back to Trabian. Present. Let's present this first. Mademoiselle. Yes. Are you looking for La Job? What? No, no, I was just... Let me see. Your style is un peu différent, but you have a good face. Different. Felicitation. You have passed. I will hire you. Bien, come with me. I will teach you everything I know. He's getting hit by bird seed. And coffee mugs. And tasers. And whips. And fists. Nick, help! I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. Maybe I should do both. Oh, he's not here anymore. Um. Okay, so I get to research without Maya. Personally... It's really tight behind the cash register. Can Mr. Armstrong even get in there? And we got it in, could he get out again? Wow, it's calling him Fat Phoenix, really? This must be the table where the poisoning occurred. The stains, t the stain tells the story well. And fire extinguishers. True, I forgot about that. Fire extinguishers. Polar and... Yeah, I said fists already. It's Schrodinger's cashier. <laughs> Is there any cash in the cash register? Don't know until the till is opened. The whole area is still cordoned off with police tape. I guess we'll see an investigation. Eh, we're just ready to go. But we haven't eaten the food. We don't know if it's inedible. It's pretty cold out there on the streets. Peaceful, though. It's nice people can... Take it easy and have the holiday rush. Okay. I don't think there's anything else. A bad feeling about the pink man. It might be because my existence is put through ways now due to him. But still. <laughs> He's not going to do anything. Move. Detention center. Looks like they have Maggie in questioning. I guess I've asked her pretty much everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. Okay. Criminal affairs. Is Gumshoe here? Finally! Well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? The one that's gonna find her innocent? Um, no, not yet. I've only just We've only just started our investigation. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm putting off all my other cases for now, pal. I'm just really fired up about this. Oh yeah, one more thing. The retrial's been approved. Court's sitting at 10am tomorrow. And Godot's gonna be the prosecutor. Oh. Him. Now listen up, pal. If Maggie's found guilty again... Yes. Um... I'll... I'll make sure you get locked up for... Locked up good for it, got it? How? So the guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force. You were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I mean, not too close, you know? Hey, what's with the funny looks, pal? I was just her... It wasn't anything like... Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training. But that was it. Nothing happened. Gumshoe sure is sweating up a storm over nothing. Ah, so that's it. Her big old Gumshoe has a little old crush on Maggie. I... I don't like her or anything. 
I, I was... Arg. Note to self, gossip with Maya about this later. <laughs> Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? You gotta keep it a secret, got it? Sure. Babaka. Uh, would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, tell your face, pal, not me. You'd have to be blind to see what's on your mind. The victim. So I was wondering, could you fill me in on the victim? Glen Elg. It's the same backwards and forwards. Because Maya keeps turn the evil twin name is backwards. Glen Elg, he was a computer programmer. I see. A programmer? He was just a regular Joe working for a small time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day. And all she did was take him his coffee on the day of the murder, pal. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chef, said it was the first time he'd seen the guy. A programmer and a first time customer at that. What possible reason could Maggie have had to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was still somehow established in her trial. You're kidding. What was her supposed motive? Sorry, pal. I'm real busy and I haven't even got enough time to sift through these papers. Look into it yourself, okay? What could this motive have been? This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, that's right. The judge already ruled on the case and all the evidence is in already. The only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal, I've got a mountain of papers on this case to look over before tomorrow. But I'm just going to say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... she's... Eternal fam, how be you? Okay, so she's a bit out there and a bit off base sometimes, but she was a good cop. That's not exactly complimentary, you know. So what do you think really happened? And just how contradictory is her testimony? The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie still insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Right, but... Right, but get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone. Even the chef. I had to play, uh... Monster to rise, but I thought I'd stop in and say hi. <sighs> Thank you very much for popping in. I hope you enjoy Monster Hunter Rise. I might pop in a bit later. Then there's that CD. CD? Oh yeah. She just mentioned something about a CD. Oh, not live? Ah, oh, okay. There was a sample CD on the table, sir. But our guys turned that place... Uh, turned that place upside down. There was no CD. What? Not on the table, not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. But didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece, too? Yeah, but that was for the portable radio in the front pocket of his hoodie. You don't need a scouter for your little portable radio. A radio? He didn't have a CD player? You got it. Your phony never explained that contradiction at all. Come to think of it, that the owner of Trebian didn't mention that CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. Let's present all the evidence. That thing real, pal? Why does everyone keep asking me that? I wonder what this phony of yours is like. He had Maggie found guilty of murder, doesn't that tell you? I've got to track this creep down. Magazine clipping. I wasn't the trial myself, but I asked this one detective I know how your defense was. And what did he say? He started off by saying, I'm at a complete loss for words. But he must have found some quick, because he went on about how bad you were for an hour. But he said you sucked so much it seemed like you were trying to get Maggie found guilty. It looked like I was trying to get Maggie found guilty? Well, what's that? A sports paper? Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Trey BN. It's dated the same day as the murder. Maybe on something here. And look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey. What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber. Wow, he actually seems to be thinking for once. Phoenix, don't be so mean to the man who saved you multiple times. Ah, it's no good, I can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Uh... Hey, pal. I'm going to borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I want to get a handwriting analysis done on this scribble. Handwriting, huh? I would be good to know more about that in any case. Thanks, pal. I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue. 
Sports paper given to Detective Gumshoe. Make of this. Okay, so that's... Uh, time for... Uh, what did... Oh, that's the same as nothing. The chef of Trey Bien, huh? You know what that chef said to me? Oh la la, your body is full of blood toxins. And then he gave me this... And then he gave me this bottle. But what's in it? I don't know. The label says Juniper. I'm under orders to put a few drops of it in my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know, there's something about that lady. I mean, guy. Huh? Huh, you can't stop thinking about him? Not like that, pal. Give me a break. He's not my type. I mean, I can't stop thinking that he's involved with this case somehow. I'd like to know a little something more about our charming chef. Have you gone to see Maggie? Of course I have, but I... I wasn't much good at consoling her. I'm... Gumshoot Giga based. I'm... I'm not very good with words. Oh. Yeah, I guess I must have looked a bit down. Maggie's really supportive of me. It was great to have someone to talk to. Did he go for her, or for himself? I'm such a loser. I had high hopes for Maggie. I was going to make her the best detective there ever was. Then all of a sudden she was charged with murder and arrested. I never saw it coming. I never imagined they'd find her guilty. I hate myself for not being able to do anything. It's okay, Detective Gumshoe. We still have a chance to make this right. You know what? Not such a bad guy after all, pal. That's the guy who's going to be the prosecutor in Maggie's retrial tomorrow. Oh, really? He was working on a bunch of more important cases at the moment. But he cancelled them all just so he could take you on, pal. Why are that guy so determined to see me fail? You sure attract a lot of attention, huh? Too bad it's all the wrong kind. She cross-examined me once, you know? What? Me did? Yeah. That was us. The big guns locking horns. Witness versus lawyer. It was a battle of cunning tactics and tricks. But the witness isn't supposed to play any tricks. I can't believe she's gone. Hey, so how come she's on with you today? She's working down at the restaurant right now. Working, huh? Yeah, it's tough being broke. I would know. Um, okay. Next time I see her, I'll show her how to make the world's best instant noodles. We allow learners how to sit together is the only way. Um, why is he shaking my hand with such enthusiasm? So what exactly is it about is it that caught your attention about the chef at Train BN? It's um kind of hard to say. The guy's probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, detective, didn't you say you'd give me the dirt and anything? Well, this sort of stuff is kinda unimportant gossipy stuff, you know, pal? Look, how about this? You go to Train BN and investigate the place yourself, and if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you report back to me, okay? Um, don't suppose I get a choice in this, huh? I guess I better find out more about the chef and Trey Bien and report back to Gumshoe. Okay. Poor Maya, looks like Mr. Armstrong's already taken a shine to her. We'll just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'll go pick her up from Trey Bien once things have cooled off. Um. The scent of flowers sure is strong. It's almost making me dizzy. The fork. Oh, um, hello? Who was that just now? A customer? She's sort of a dark aura about her. Ah, welcome. Be Avenue. Wow, what a cute voice. <laughs> yeah, bye, I guess. Oh, it's just you, Nick. Maya? Well, how do I look? Maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. Then who was that woman I just saw? Oh, oh, since you're here, you might as well have something to eat. Uh, yeah, I am kind of hungry, actually. So, how do you like your new job, Maya? Phoenix is flirting on the job. Bad lawyer. I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make coffee, work at the cash register. Of course you need a customer before I can do any of that. Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. 
Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my give me a tip smile. So is she like, has she been strong armed into just being a waitress now? Hey Nick, why don't you order something? The chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's the twin tea set, so it's twenty dollars, of course. Armstrong, am I right? <laughs> the twin tea set? I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. What? But you can't. Come on, Nick. It's not every day I get to be a waitress. I'm gonna try carrying plates and working the cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Um, about the lunch. Oh, a fine choice, sir. No, I, um, well. Kitchen, a lunch special, please. Because the owner has furled all the male customers until it has become harassment. <laughs> With all the extras, drink, side salad, dessert, and gift. I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. I is really getting into this. How much is the set lunch, then? $20, huh? With the drink, side salad, and the dessert, it's... $45? <laughs> Phoenix, ace attorney, can't afford $45. Hey, wait a sec, Maya. Where to keep you waiting, sir? Here you are, our deluxe fortify lunch... <laughs> fortify lunchy set. Whoa. A dish inspired by lobster and abalone fricassee with a balsamic vinaigrette. Bon appetit. Um, thanks? Come on, Nick, hurry up and try it already. Lobster, huh? Alright, down the hatch it goes. Burp. Well? Are you hungry, Maya? I'm s <laughs> bone apple tea, yeah. Here, it's yours. Really? R remember, Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you'd better polish off that plate. I just remembered. I've got to clean the toilets. Hey, you can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. For <laughs> record, this horrific expensive lunch. How does that guy manage to make good food taste so bad? Hey Nick, you want to take a peek at the kitchen? The kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Hmm. Now what was it Mikey said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all the chef's greatest secrets. In the kitchen? That sounds tasty. Hey, wait up, Maya. What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Aren't you going to show me around? I guess I'm going to find some cool clue and show it off in your face. I'd better conduct the search in the kitchen myself. Oh, isn't aren't these like a major health code violation? And here it is, the famous Trabian kitchen. My first time in here too, actually. There's a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so you better search quickly. Chop chop. <laughs> They're a violation to my eyes. Uh, mood. What's this? It looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, the aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 98, 99, 100. They're all the same, too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label, either. And it doesn't smell. All the liquid inside, then, I wonder. Hey, Nick, we should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. We won't, he won't miss one, will he? Maya continuing to be the kleptomaniac we all need. Kind of unknown. I'll probably bring that to Gumshoe. Now, this is one large mirror. I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. There's a book on the dresser. Boris Armstrong's Bedtime Literature. Not exactly Pulitzer Prize material, is it? Looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool. Read one out. Now say it in your best French accent with intensity, okay? Okay, um, here's one, ahem. It's called Printemp. The two of them are like actors from a film. The coffee's still undrunk. Sweet nothing's over too soon on that sad Sunday morning. The foolish cocktail's so delicious. Takes the last sip of your tea and I know what I will do. I must lie to you, I must. 
the fuck? Ah, uh, that's it. Yep, that's a poem for you. Uh, what are these lace curtains for? I don't know, but they give the place a real homey feel, don't they? No. They give it a feel like I should leave immediately and never come back. Hmm, lace curtains. You know, if I was a cooking pot, I'd, perfect, I'd be perfectly happy to sit in a shelf under those. How do you respond to something like that? Now I know I'm in a French restaurant, I've never heard of most of these seasonings. Hey Nick, this container has oyster sauce? What? You don't know what oyster sauce is? Isn't that used in Chinese food? Ack, look, right there on the counter. My Magatama, what's it doing there? What indeed? Recovered from the kitchen. Oyster sauce? It's a uh, sauce from oysters, duh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's sauce made from cooking oysters. Um, and yes, I did double check there just to be sure that wasn't being an idiot. <laughs> I should have seen that coming. Now I know. Uh, there you go. Not luckily, knives look pretty sharp. Let's get one of those slices through a cheesecake. A cheesecake? You don't have to need a sharp knife for one of those, Nick. Oops. Hmm. That smells so good. Something's bubbling away nicely in that pot. <laughs> one sec. I have no idea if her voice will come through, but I'll try. Hey Siri. What's oyster sauce? Oh, it's on... It's on silent, so it's not speaking it out. Let me do that again, so I can come over the uh, come over the microphone. Hey Siri, what's oyster sauce? Oyster sauce describes a number of sauces. Most common and viscous dark brown con oyster extracts, sugar, salt, and water. Would you like to hear more? Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Must be the lobster and abalone fricassee with the balsamic vinaigrette. Is that what I just ate for lunch? Maybe. What you ate is the only French dish I know the name of. Okay, so there's nothing else in here. Uh... Oh. What about this? No. What about this? Nope. 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 Okay, move. To Vitamin Square. Oh, there's a broken scooter here. Hmm, the old guy's not here anymore. Draft. I still have someone answer questions for him. A scooter, huh? You'd leave it right in the middle of a park like this. The wheel guard and the light are busted. I guess it must have been an accident. It's totally wrecked. Go Or <laughs> start that has a lamp, nice. Oh god, this is the guy that pretended to be us. Hey, what do you think you's doing with my bike? No, no, I was just Guar. You's been messing with my new ride. Is that what you's been doing? New ride? Isn't that kind of an old bike, Guar? You, he's gonna pay for this. It wasn't me, I was just passing by. Hey, then who's... Uh, who's the one that covered my saddle and crap, huh? Alright, you're gonna pay? You catch my drift? No, wait a second, I'm not a pigeon, so I couldn't have done it. A wise guy, eh? What the hell is he doing with his mouth? I ought to beat you so hard, it'll feel like you were smooching the express train. Uh-oh. You better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers, and then you's gonna pay. Um, actually, I'm a lawyer myself. What do you say? I'm Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. 
He's laughing. Phoenix Wright? You saying you, Phoenix Wright? Um, yeah, I am. So you're a wise guy too, huh? Because I'm Phoenix Wright. The one and only. Can we call Gumshoe to come down here immediately and grab this guy? What? Out of my way, I got a cruise. He's gone. Surely that guy wasn't my phony, was he? He wasn't anything like me. <laughs> Guess I better make a note of the scooter. Wheel guard's all mashed up. Ha, huh, pathetic. Oh, it's you. A few threats from a little brat like that. You look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes. Have you been here the whole time then? I was in that strawberry, I had some thinking to do. More like you had some cowering to do. Uh, why'd you keep going then? Where are you, filthy pigeon? You want the food? Okay, another three locks. I knew it. This old guy's got something to hide, but what could it be? Um. Okay, that's nothing. What about this? No. What about this? No. I don't have that other guy on record. Uh, okay. What? What is the first question that I need to answer? So you told me the truth. Why are you a regular at a restaurant that you dislike so much? Isn't it obvious? You only have one reason to go to restaurants, to eat. To eat? Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to the restaurant for the food at all. You instant brat, how dare you accuse me? What proof have you got? You know anyone else in the world would go to that place for its food. The proof is in the pudding. Or in this case, the lunch menu. That's the twenty set. The food at Trabian is terrible and expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a job of work since I was born rather than feeding the pigeons. What a load of crock. Here's another story, but the price is nothing to me. So you're saying that you go there because you've got money to burn. Exactly. I have so much cash, I go for a swim in my money vault every day. Unfortunately, that's a lie. What? I don't have money to burn. You're flat broke. The magazine. This is yours, right? My magazine. Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? I was... So what? So I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot at the moment. I need spending money. Oh? I don't go to the restaurant for food. I just go for the... Javachino. Javachino? Yeah, I think you mean cappuccino. Anyway, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. There'd be some golden beans. What's your problem? You think a poor man would be better off drinking dishwater, do you? Is that it? No, I wasn't thinking that. I was wondering if the coffee there is really that great. No, it's not. But... But anyway, yes. That place has free newspapers to read every day. Newspapers? Exactly. You don't want me hanging around at home. So I go hit. I go there. I'm sorry, sir. There are no free papers to read at Trabian. Um... No free papers to read. I don't have anything for that. Okay. Um. Okay, nothing to say about that. Move to anything new in the kitchen? No. Let's go to the detention center. And then to the Criminal Affairs Department. Hey, you're just in time. That was Detective Gumshoe. The lab got back to me about that newspaper you gave me. You must mean a sports paper with a memo scribbled on it. So, what did they say? Did an analyst turn up anything? Is that the doodle was written by the victim, Glen L, no doubt about it. I expected as much. The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. That's our best interpretation of the facts at the moment. Sports paper refiled. M MC Bummer. I get the feeling I've heard the name somewhere before. Oh well, I guess it'll come back to me. 
Don't forget to report back to me with whatever you find in the restaurant, okay, pal? I'm going to start taking orders from Gumshoe. Hello? I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. It's the bike. It's... This. You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Huh? I don't... Huh? I don't get you. This is mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same. Wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle doesn't smell, huh? Smells like a skunk to me, pal. Might let me borrow that bottle for a while. I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. Small bottle looking to gumshoe. I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. You suspect Gene Armstrong? I've got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. That would be the same secret Gumshoe was talking about before. Guess I better fill you in on the details. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. Yeah, please do. I need that. So what's Mr. Armstrong's secret? Ever had lunch at Trey Bien, pal? Um, yes. So how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean, and he's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess it's probably the food. The real scoop on the guy is, he, is he's up to his ears in debt. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million in the red. Half a million? Are we talking dollar... Yeah. Hey, if it was Sterling, he'd really be in trouble. Sorry, that figure just took me up by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises, and I'd be willing to bet that Chef's got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. The owner of the loan is Tender Lender. Ryan, how are you doing? Um, let's go back to Trey Bien. He has sinus infection. I'm sorry. Um, do we have anything to talk to her about? No. Let's move into the kitchen. There's a lawyer impersonator in this case. Yes, there is. Um, let's go to Vitamin Square again. Um, hmm. Well, there's a judge impersonator, so why not? So why does he go there? Maybe I have enough for this guy? I'm not sure. Don't mean so mean to Uji. Maybe in regular. Okay, so we already know the... We already know this bit. Also the Soviet music. I don't know, because it's this angry old guy. You're broke. Uh, there are no free papers. Is it this? No. It wasn't that. There are no free papers. Um. Okay, it's that. Take a look at this. Oh, what is it? It's a newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Trey Bien. That was a stretch, Solace. I know. So, what of it? This was the only paper there, and it's dated more than one month ago. What? You see what I'm getting at here? That restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is just one that, that a customer happened to leave behind. Ah, ah. Okay, one lock left. Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? I'm not hiding anything. I'm going to have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason why you go so much Trey Bien is... You like the chef! No, nope, that's not it. You like the waitress! Yes. <laughs> What do I spit that girl for? She was the waitress of Trey Bien. Ah. 
Therefore, the answer to the mystery of why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant is the waitress. Ah, but I don't recognize that face. They are probably telling the truth here because you weren't looking at the girl's face, but at her outfit. Gulp? That's the truth, isn't it? You became regular at the restaurant because of the waitress's uniform. That uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Asti, how are you doing? Uh, I can't take it. To you, the waitress was your... Enough, please, no more. Stop saying that word, stop saying waitress, stop it, stop it, stop it. Oh yeah, he's a fan of the fashion. Now we're back to full health. Um, sir? Yes, it's true. I was there for the young girl. Fine, so I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old devil. Popeye's cancer spread from his arms to his nose. No, no, I didn't mean it like that. I even get one of those lousy cups of Javachino every time for eight dollars. All because of the servant girl. Punish me, lock me up. Ready? that's not what I'm here for. You'll be the same over the 20 years and you'll understand what it's like. You know how painful it is to be an old man like me. No, really, listen, sir. Stop calling me that. I have a name, you know, boy. I'll show you some respect. Hmm? I'm Victor Kudo. This is a sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. I won't tell you anything more. Then the rest of the time of the incident, which means I have to hear his testimony one way or another. Hmm. I don't believe this. I even broke his cyclops and everything. I have to try to get him when he's in a better mood. Okay. Um. Wish he would stop stop flicking his nose. Yeah. Anything new in the kitchen? No. Has Gumshoe come back with anything? Um. He looks like one of those. He looks like one of those grouchy old man types. Yeah. It's okay though. I don't mind guys like that. But if he's involved with this case somehow, that's a different story. Um, sure. Here's a tip for you, pal. If you want to get information out of a guy like that, you're gonna have to find his weakness and try to get under his skin. His weakness? I wonder what. We're gonna have to bring Maya in the fucking maid outfit to him. That's what we're gonna have to do. Uh... Oh, it's that old man. Is he still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. I got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Hasn't good. Oh, ouch. Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh? Me? Why? There's something I really want to ask that old man. Sure, okay. I'll just get changed. No, hang on. Can you go like that? I guess. Um, sir? Hmm, you again. Um, the old man has a fetish for maid outfits, so to get him to talk, we have to... We are bringing Maya in a maid outfit. Hmm, well, well. I see. Uh, Nick? His eyes are burning into me. It's okay, I think it's going pretty well. I know what's going on. I want to know why this is a thing. Because, I don't know. Japanifornia. Ka, huh? You're still just a little child. Run along and play in the slide, alright? Play in the slide? Ah, if you were so close, there's a little more and he would have spilled. Mm-hmm. Pigeon. Hmm, ka. How can we crack this guy? Um, excuse me, please, sir. Why? Can't you see I'm feeding the... Pidge? At least the dude isn't a pedophile. Of course she fucking did. Maya knew exactly what was going on and called him Mia because Mia's bigger. Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. I love the, the fact that with no actual communication between them two, the two figured exactly what was going on, and Mia's playing into it. He says, yes, of course, certainly, I'm Victor, Victor Kudo. Can you get the hand up from down there, please? Even from beyond the grave. Wow. 
<laughs> okay, I'm out. No, Ryan, stay. What you saw? About the incident? You mean the man who died of drinking the Javachino? It's like he's a different person. It was quite a shock, even for me. He was a strange looking boy. The girl took the Javachino over to him, you see. And was the customer alone? Definitely, he was the only person at the table. Then he took one sip of his Javachino and 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 he said something like Uarg and then collapsed dead. He has a scouter? Oh yeah. He's trying to figure out what power level Phoenix is in lawyer terms. You're so good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything. Whatever you want to know. This is Asti. Um, to Ron Delight in the previous case. Show Asi the kitchen, please. Oh, I will. He certainly seems to be telling the truth now. It looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see this other man either. Do you like the food at Trabian? Well, of course. I'm really quite a sophisticated man. I was a young businessman once, you know. I set up a casino in London. Really? How interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. What a lovely story. London's in England, not France. Oh yes, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. It's too much. I can't take it. I want France. God. I think Ryan literally dipped. Uh, I can't believe me is laughing at the guy. Oh, Ryan's still here. <laughs> He's arriving, oh god. You visit Trabian a lot, don't you? Of course, I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. Hey, 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 hey. Really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Careful of that chef, my dear. The chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right, the man's an ex-con. He's an ex-con? Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh, no, those eyes. I can't take this. Just replace eyes with lips, and then put a picture of Ron Delight, an asty name, right over this. Uh, Mia's really got this guy eating out of her hand. He steals things from his customers. From his customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things, mainly. He's a pilfer, so you'd be careful around him, my dear. This is bullying. Are you sure about this? Of course, he's arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my Javachino. He already is a regular. Let me write you a little haiku about it. A haiku? A Japanese poem will explain all you need to know about that chef. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman, repeat offender, Victor Kudo. If he takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. Poor guy. He couldn't do enough for Mia. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. You got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me something like this. Why did that come to the front? I didn't want that to come to the front. Guess about time to wrap up today's investigation. Oh, I can't go to the kitchen! Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah. Plus, no one came to the restaurant. Oh la la, Mademoiselle Maya? No? How can you leave me like this? Are you ready, Ryan? Are you ready to see Mr. Armstrong? Uh, I'm sorry. That reminds me. Mr. Armstrong had a psych locker three, didn't he? Gonna have to break those. Mr. Armstrong, I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Uh, a volunteer? Of course. Okay, I'm good. Thanks. Good luck. <laughs> no, Ryan, don't go, please. Oh, that's his upset face. Uh, what is happening? I don't like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Alor, alor, I will confess everything. Just don't hurt me. Huh? Well, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket? The man who died here had a lottery ticket. For half a million dollars. 
What, what did you walk into? You walked into the third case of a Phoenix Wright game. That's what you walked into. How are you doing, Three Monkeys? <laughs> Half a million? We? Oui. But after that incident, is this ticket? It disappeared. The guy killed him for the lottery ticket. The ticket disappeared. This was the motives that the prosecution gave for Maggie. This said that she poisoned the man to get a half a million dollar lottery ticket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? May Alor, you've been trying to hide the information about the lottery ticket from me, and I want to know the reason why. Yes, and you too can use those uh, emotes if you uh, subscribe for free with Twitch Prime or uh, sub for at least tier one. No, monsieur, you doubt me, but I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> The half a million dollar lottery ticket, I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. Mr. Armstrong, I believe there is a very high probability that it was you. Ah. <laughs> we, can we get like a... Can, can we get a, a full section of... A full section firing in chat? Oh, that is one piercing scream, even for a man like him. May pourquoi moi? Why, you have no evidence? I am not Mask Star to Mask, and not the kind of person who steals the property of others. I disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but evidence to the contrary. I present to you proof that you have stolen from others in the past. <laughs> oh shit, that bird's packing. <laughs> Is that a heron? He's got a gun! Blam, blam. <laughs> shit, I need Sean to draw that comic. Like, I don't, I, I want it, like, super simple or whatever, <laughs> but that's what I, <laughs> Is this a poem? I'm a seer, you know me so well, I adore poems. Please read it and put some feeling into it. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman, repeat offender. I'd have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong, but you have been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Mon dieu. Le mens, le mens You are the liar. You deny it. Do you want to make the false accusations, s'il vous plaît? So do you have any proof? I want to see the incontestable proof that I've ever stolen from one of my customers. My Magatama. Seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. What is that? This is my Magatama, and I found it in your kitchen. Wow, that scream just about broke some windows. Oui, oui. I have a weakness for la, la little trinkets and la figurines. My hand just slips out, I cannot stop it. It's all handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? Oui, it is the truth. I'm just a timid little girl inside, monsieur, a timid little girl. Besides, this time, it was not a small trinket, oui? It was $500,000. Mais non, why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really, now? Oh, monsieur, what is it? Is it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? Yeah, I would be scared shitless of this guy in prison. And that you are in desperate need of a large amount of cash. This. This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? Ah. You have a loan. To the tune of a million dollars. A lottery ticket would have wiped out your debts. Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Ah. Uh, another scream. Mr. Armstrong, you said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? As a man, he was listening to the radio with his earpiece. Hmm, I guess it's only about that too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, he exploded. Yes, half a million, he shouted. And the ticket? We? Oui. He had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I was so desperately in need of money, so I... Put the poison in his put the poison in his coffee. No 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 no. Oh no, you naughty man. I simply add myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, poor Quapa. He had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, this is not true. 
I did not take it. A ticket for half a million, I mean. But you told us you did. You said you took a ticket. Mais non. Ma fille. I. Ma fille, it was not. That's enough. Huh? Ah. Mr. Godot. What the heck are you doing here? Uh, this is, without a doubt, the worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. Try gloves on his saxophone. Came in here for coffee? Does his craving for coffee know no bounds? Clearly not. Perhaps Mr. Armstrong sold one of the victim's tickets in the day in question. I am la airhead, no? Just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at? It's not Godot. It's Godo. Godo. Gudo. I refuse Gudo. I'll say Gudo. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So, the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I'm just a pretty face. Without my looks, I have nothing. Fucking French. What happened to the winning ticket, then? The one he meant to steal? Indeed, what did happen to it? I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the motive turns out tomorrow, won't we? Movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? Mm, voila, you too. Time to laugh at the pretty little airhead. Also, I won't be needing this note anymore. Why? Also, you've got a new mystery now. Nelly, where did the winning ticket go? I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway. You can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this. And certainly not again. Yes, I'd like to save, please. Well, we're going to be in court now. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. Maggie! Back, Detective Gumshoe. Are you doing alright? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. So then, don't let me get you down, Maggie. Don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you. E -E yes. You better be square this. Ca you better square this case away. Got a pal. Maggie's innocent. You hear? If you square up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. For what? I think he's serious. Maybe for all the thieving we've been doing. Hey, detective, you're on our side for once, right? E yep. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Uh, of course. I got the situation under control. I'm going to be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't match with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? We don't get to see any other detective. I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, detective. And now I can count on you. Also, we should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. Court is now in session for the trial of If they want to localize this game, they would have changed these made outfits to Hooters uniforms. Yeah, then their age rating would go up. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Cup number one. Ah, bitter. Mr. Um, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Ah, what's wrong? Nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was... Use talking to me? It was a little, well, intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix right is back with us now, is he? Our trusty? So, Mr. Godot, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trice, whether you're a fake or the real deal, we'll find out soon enough to this trial today. 
but I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. That's why I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for a relevant testimony during this retrial, nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I only beat him once, though. The first case we beat Payne, the second case we beat him. This is the third case. Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Let's start with the formalities, shall we? Name and occupation? A witness, state your name for the court. Ah, huh? oh, sorry, sir. The name is Police Department Detective. Occupation, Dick Gumshoe. <laughs> yeah, so what happened was, um, we got this... An article from a month ago saying that Phoenix was thoroughly wrecked in court. Pa uh, Winston Payne defeated him. Um, oh, you're getting the whole thief murder thing as a separate trial? Okay, fair. Uh, so, this is a month later. This is a retrial for Maggie. Other way around, detective. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation is tied up with another case right now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control, for everyone's sake. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you outline for the court the basic facts of the case? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's a fake Gumshoe. Uh, I don't think you could you could get a, you could make a fake Gumshoe. O only people who are born this particular kind of kind but stupid can be this particular kind but stupid. The victim's name was Glen Elg. Forward and backwards, same with same spelling. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Inc., a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts this into evidence. Potassium cyanide with half one and half two. Um, and here are the floor plans of the restaurant. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poison coffee was brought over to him by the, um... By the waitress. The waitress being the accused? Yeah. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Gene Armstrong, the owner and chef. And a regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. Hmm. It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. X equals victim seat. It's Jean. Come, detective. Take up this hammer. And nail the defendant's coven shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Um, yes, sir. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glen Elg, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. What we found was a potassium cyanide that suffered any packs of punch. And, um, it looks like Miss Bird might have had, well, some kind of motive. We're gonna press everything as usual. Hmm. Using the dark, ar aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. The fact that this case seemed to be ironclad, Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes. Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you, that wasn't me. Let's press everything. Is it? I wouldn't know. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bernard. She claims there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said, and I... You're risking the poison being altered? Fair. Um... 
What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey. Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. Their two testimonies tie up on that. It was... it was Phoenix. They both said there was no other guy at the table. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Always press harder. Well, maybe the other witness just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table is obscured in some way. Huh. That argument is as weak as the coffee at Trebient, right? Hmm? I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population, the defendant. This is a photograph taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime. How, Mr. Tri, could anyone have overlooked a second person at the table? Maybe they went a little bit to the left. It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. Another guy, okay. He was listening to his radio, you say? Yeah, he had a portable yeah, he had a portable radio in his chest pocket. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? Think about how one of them had some sort of earpiece. What to do? Should I press at this point? Always press. And what was it that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? How should I know? Thanks a lot. We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. This isn't going very well, is it? Hmm, Detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? Trace of the poison and repair the coffee cup. Do I still have that bottle? I do not. The trace of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else. Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid or was it a powder? If I had to put it in layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. Well, the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Ah, huh. do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trice? Or what, milk in the coffee? The victim took his coffee black with no sugar. Okay, so no milk. Hmm. It seems that the poison could only have been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Oh, fuck, I press leave it. No, I should leave it alone. I got a bad feeling where this is going. Liz, maybe you should leave it well alone. I was had a bad feeling, but I was about to have a bad feeling. It was really bad. Make sure we move on to another part of his testimony. I might come back to that. Okay, potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide? I've heard of that chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison, Detective Gumshoe? It's, well, that stuff's lethal. Well, no fucking shit. Eat too much, and you're history. How much is too much? A lethal dose is 0.2 grams. The same weight as, uh, one airsoft BB. That's bad enough to finish anyone off. 0.2 grams? How much is that? You know when you swab your ears for earwax? Yeah, about that much. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe's got an abundance of. Hmm, such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. Okay, we'll press it. Some kind of a motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. You know what my golden rule is, detective? Chuck out a bad cup of coffee, you can always get another. Huh? I don't get it. I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. So stick to the facts, Detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, Gumshoe. She was... they said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it, that's what we heard yesterday too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million. Mr. Romdom knew about the ticket too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then his apostle Maggie stole the winning one. If she was arrested without the ticket on her, uh, press it. 
Wait a minute. Mirify's large ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. That sign was used for gold mining 50 years ago. It strips gold from ore rock, rock face. They used to just pour the stuff into the environment to get gold. I see. I have here in my hand of the very ticket in question. That's the half a million dollar lottery ticket. One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search of the defendant. What? Order, order. Ah, she's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately. Let me get my eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial, too. But it feels heavier now, so now half a million dollars, you say? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, your honor. That's a nice person, unfortunately. You already think there are any contradictions in this testimony? To be honest, I don't know, but Gumtru told us... Told that in the lobby, he said it would be for, for me not at front, right? There was one that I didn't press fully. Um, Was it this one that didn't press fully? I guess not. Can I skip your animation, please? Yeah, fuck it, press. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison found in the victim's coffee cup. What proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right. <laughs> in case you were wondering, that last objection was for the detective there. Huh? For me? Oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. That piece, sir. Yes, that piece. Um, <laughs> what piece was it again? He threw the coffee again! Should I be grateful this coffee is only hot enough to give me first degree burns? Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. Oh yes, it's, uh, it's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Inclusive proof the victim did drink... Mm, no, not necessarily. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. I mean, to be fair, I'm not sure the wildlife in Australia would be uh, vulnerable to potassium cyanide. For the record, the only prints in the cup are the victims and the defendants. Yeah, circumstantial at best. Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. That's enough. The facts of the case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. I like an old man who knows the score. There's also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. That's not something you want to actually say in court. I don't mind old man who was weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. And the rose equals murder. <laughs> I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird is wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. That stain looks like... It can't be. Blood, can it? Huh. Seems the star of our play was a little flustered. She must spill the coffee on herself. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. The pocket? A search card out right after the incident covered this. You puked both blood and coffee, he didn't swallow the coffee. 
Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. A bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. What? Yeah, I could have used this info beforehand. Order, order, order. The court will accept these items into evidence. Apron. And potassium cyanide. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Hey guys, I think she did it. Trial by ambush. Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about it, blood stain. He can only see in red. That's why he can't see it. You don't need to be told, just look at it. Well, detective, could this stain really be blood? No, 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 no way, sir. That's... It's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? She must have gotten some on her apron while taking some of their breakfast that day. You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. Well, there's something like that again, and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. Ugh. I thought everyone knew what it was already. I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made on this case. Should it, will it be the same judge or different judge? I do not know. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They've all been clearly established, but I can argue them. Well, Trice, it seems you really are phony after all. I really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. The crime was reported at 2.25 by a kind of scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him. We figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm... You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, Trice. Don't count out any more cross-examinations after this one. So let the fun begin. Oh yeah, 100% Asti. The fake phoenix did it. Let me just pop a quick save. In case of a crash. Uh, press everything as usual. Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe. There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Ah, we're always talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at them, and seeds. Hmm, seeds. Ha! Huh. It was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. I guess not even the mighty Godot can avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in the place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. Poor Maggie and Pan- oh yeah, so. Press. How long was the defendant unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene at around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. Okay. There was another 10 minutes or so before she came to. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. I bet you would like to have carried out the search, too. Wow, Phoenix, way to go from him having a crush to him being a creep. I would love to see Maggie sleep like that, all pretty and peaceful. You're a professional to gumshoot, not a professional bird watcher. Say the romantics for your own time, Detective. All we need to know about is the investigation. Oops, I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? Didn't have any? Are you saying that it was stolen, then? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. Well, he had a 58 cents in his wallet. 58 cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. Way to fucking call me out, Judge. Goddamn. Or some kind of outlaw. Why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I want something here. Place was expensive. But it's all in the testimony. 
Wait a sec. Huh? Did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how are you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. He's so let down. He's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going on. There was a prescription bag at the victim's table along with a lottery ticket. See, Mr. Glen Elg visited his doctor before he went to Treby Inn. They got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. I don't know what other people's countries, but here it has the name of the patient on the on the bag as well. Hmm. That's a reliable enough source for the course. Fuck's sake! Sorry, print failed again in the exact same forking place. And I need to forking restart it. Uh, asked about the prescription bag. What of medicine was in the bag? Okay, so it seems going faster did work a bit. Printer skill issue. Shut up. God damn. I need to option temp. Extrusion temperature, fine. Heat bed. Even more. Speed. Extrude speed, change, move speed. There. And uh, let's hope that works. Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. Oh, huh? yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty? Okay. That might have been the bottle that was taken from... that we took from the kitchen. Huh. You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? And desperate, are you, Trite? Now, what happened with the investigation after that, Detective? <sighs> but the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, is it someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah, you've nailed it, pal. Hmm, happens to me all the time. We had a department party the other day, and when I got home... I was wearing the boss's shoes. Give up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. Sorry. So, Trite, someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. That's a pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? Um, well, I'd love to if I had any. I just support your theory. Continue with your testimony, witness. Actually, I kind of want to go back and ask about the health insurance see what his financial situation was like. Um, dinner time, by the way? No worries. Uh, okay, it won't let me do that again. Press. The half million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for. Wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh, yeah. The one the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? They're just going to let him get away with it? It was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares since that little, except for Gumshoe. What about holding his testimony? They're just going to hand down his verdict. No, he wasn't giving us anything to work with. We can't find any contradictions. He doesn't give us something. And yeah, that's true. Like, dumb and... <laughs> Maggie and Gumshoe are, like, dumb and dumber. Wow. Our only hope is that they were so dumb, they missed something obvious. Be the dumbest you've ever been? <laughs> um, passed down from the shock. Don't have any identification. Save. Um, if I present the price of the food... It is not it. Um, and already taken the bottle of poison. 
Hmm. Your pocket, a small pocket with big stains. Hmm. Hmm. Now is that there's something else missing from the crime scene. Nothing else missing from the crime scene. Um Nothing else missing from the crime scene. Yeah, the medicine's missing. Hit up Gumshoe, I think I should point something out to you. There's just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, uh -huh, finally! I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testify that nothing else is missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Um, no, they didn't. The victim was giving, given a prescription right before going to train the inn. Where, then, did the medicine disappear to? You... Are too cool, pal! <laughs> Wait, not to show bias! Indeed, and due to consider due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pe <laughs> Why are you always so unreliable? I uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been lethal poison itself. Order, order. Well, Mr. Cadeau, what do you have to say to that? Ha. Huh. That's all. What? Read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New ear. Uh, Autolaryngeological. Autolaryngeological. Clinic. Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Cadeau? Hardly an illness, Your Honor. Yeah, I figured. Or like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. L found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum? And what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. I mean, that's how I take my ear creams. I, I, I eat them. As mentioned in the autopsy report, if you read the fine print, they found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. <laughs> in white ink. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trabian. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would have eaten his medication. <laughs> it seems that this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. No. Nick, if you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right. I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? Badger fucking bawling. Only moments ago, Mr. Godot made the following statement. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he's a train BN. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found in the scene of the crime? But the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. That doesn't change the fact that it cannot be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. You know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. It hardly, it hardly seems like a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did, the possibility is undeniable. Arg, my face is now smoking. That's enough. Mr. Cadeau is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call. Mr. Cadeau? Am I, uh... I've got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. You, you're a fucking witness. You can't call a witness. As the old man who was there in the restaurant the day of the murder. Victor Kudo, the pigeon hater? 
Very well. Matter of the disappearing medication seems little more than trivial, trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial, and that is something that bothers me. Yay, good job, Nick. The court will adjourn for a ten minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. I require your strongest seed, said Colsta in the bedroom. Um. Ah. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess. that the layers are going down properly. Okay, maybe. Phew, that was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. Or do you think it did die a little bit? Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. He totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay. I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. But it really hurt this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witch is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yep, yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's going to be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seeds. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Cadeau, your next witness, please. The prosecution calls lucky old-timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? Name and occupation, if you don't mind. Name's Victor Cudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. I need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? Ha! Ah, listen, youngin. How much call do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Kimono embroidery? That's what I do, or did, back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe you can embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. I had to take a job working the cash register at a burger joint, pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh yes, I was eating some seeds over a cup of javachino. Seeds? What do you think these are, hmm? I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps? Did I? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I did. I saw it all. Then please tell the court. We're all ears. He always says that. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. The young man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl? That's not Maggie. Brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's the serving girl, right there in the defendant's chair, remember her well. Mr. Kudo, she's not a serving girl, please refer to her as a waitress. Ka, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words, what's wrong with the old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses is wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Uh, excuse me. Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days 
slip away. Well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. The young man was reading the sports paper. Press. Oh, no, fuck. So you saw the victim then. You saw Mr. Glenelg. I wanted to know if Guts and Braun retained his championship or not. So he's looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? And at the location in question... There are partitions between the tables on the same side of the restaurant, right? So what if there are? If you say that you could see the victim... That means you were sitting at a table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? Ka. I go to that place to drink Javachino. I don't go to sit, I don't remember which table I was sitting at. That's very important. You mean you go there to eye the waitress? Mm. Mr. Kudo, that's a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Victor Kudo never makes mistakes. I dot every T and cross every I. I see. My eyesight's fine. The doctor said I only needed spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping at a waitress. And I saw what the servant girl put in the Javachino as well. I don't know what's coming up, and they tell you're not going to like it. Okay, press it. Your Honor, we need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Mm hmm. I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. There's no question about it. She can very quickly some white powder in there. Um. White powder. Interesting. Okay, press. Did she really put that into the coffee? You doubt me, boy? She took out uh, some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Have you been adding sugar? Sugar in a small brown bottle like that? Like that? Witness, could you please describe the bottle more, more concrete terms? Ah, huh. a bottle like this, perhaps? That's leading. Oh, there it is. That's the one. That's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume? So what did the accused put into the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Uh, he was in terrible pain and collapsed. He took just one sip. Youngins, you waste everything. Those Javachinos cost eight dollars. In the good old days, we would have drank every last drop, eaten the cup, and then died. Congratulations. You have earned the title of Battiest Man to Grace a Courtroom. So it was an immediate death? Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh yes, he slumped over without so much as a twitch. I felt the Javachino I just drank turn... The Javachino I just drank turn sour in my stomach. Oh yes, know that feeling. I'm the waitress, I presume she is... Uh, you remember her well. You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features to identify her by? Their features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry. You can see all the way up to her, her, you know. She's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize by the waitress is her outfit. But anyone could wear such a uniform, even me. Mr. Wright, please spare the court of any further mental anguish from that image. Don't get all excited, Nick. You've got to keep yourself together. The guy's got a bit carried away. Yeah, there are other things I recognize about her, too. He's pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Press harder. Sure, you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. What matters is whether that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. And quite right. Mr. Kudo, these other features that you recognize about the defendant, I'd ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There's a ribbon in her hair, and her apron straps were loose. You seem to remember several details about her appearance. What about the most crucial detail of all, her face? Ka, as if I wouldn't remember that. The witness noticed the straps in the accused apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right, I can even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair. It was red. Okay. So you see, there's something wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. I doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. 
What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Um, I'll have the straps first, I suppose. Mr. Kuto, you seem especially interested in straps. Why is that? What? The ribbon in her hair, the straps in her apron. What's the fascination? The fascination? People of all kinds of fetishes, right? <laughs> Just call it right out. Listen, you young upstarts, I haven't got some sick strap fetish. Hmm. Is there any relevance to the witness's unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? I was just curious as to why he was so fixated on the wages of straps. How many times to repeat myself? Very well. Continue with your testimony. Make it strapless. Um. Who's there for the key? I first on the waitress. Eh, uh, something clever. I wonder if the waitress was really maggy. I have to go back to that one piece. Let's let's go. Objection. I thought the waitress is back. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Ha! Huh. He's got you there, Gramps. What? People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. But well, this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment. I tell you what it says with straps or ribbons. Telling you what I, just telling you what I saw. Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observe from the front, that is, to your testimony. Sure, sure. The little man's testimony is getting longer and longer. Can't find a hole in it soon, it'll get even longer, I bet. Wasn't anything of interest. You didn't find anything to be distinct, but you did clearly see the witness's face, yes? No question about it. I didn't come this far to back down now. Victor Kudo never backs down. Red hair? Yeah. Nothing else I was looking for, but okay. The old CD guy now. Uh, um... Let's drop another save, shall we? The apron. That's it. The stain on the apron. Mr. Kudo, I'd like you to please take a look at this. Ka, that filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, reminds me of what my grandson looks like, just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. You think I'd forget something as dirty as that? Well, you half-witted clot. What? What is it? Ever since I said you have with a clot, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo? This apron. Is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning? Uh. And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means if you had really seen this apron before... Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. <laughs> Just fuck it, oops. Witness. You can't just oops your way out of this. Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial in our hands. Listen, Trite, here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That being the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird? Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you say you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. 
I can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what a burger customer wanted. He can't remember? Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Very well. Let's test just how good your memory and attention is to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. He was another of those pesky young types, wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the nosy brat kept rustling its pages. Then was listening to the wireless, remember that well. Then the serving girl in question brought over the javachino. The little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. This one we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those you-know-what types who are so vague about everything. How are you going to handle this, Nick? You only need to do one thing. You just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose was what I'd do best. Use another one of those pesky... Okay, print. Spectacles. Dark glasses to you. One of those lenses was green, but the other was broken. Newfangled rubbish. That's why I remember him so well. He had some kind of lens over his left eye. But I wouldn't have called it a pair of glasses. One second. Just gotta do a thing. Sorry, doing a thing. I'll be with you quickly. There we go. Been wearing some rather modern looking shades. I should take to wearing some and rival Mr. Godot's sharp appearance. Ah, I better come up with something sharp and quick. I guess I'll wait and see if I should challenge him about the spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, Nosy Brad kept rustling his pages. Okay. Newspaper was a sports paper, was it? That young hooligan, I nearly asked him, can't you even read without fidgeting? Hmm? How was I supposed to be able to read the back page, all that rustling going on? Needed to find out if Guts and Braun retained his championship title. It was his paper, not yours. He wanted to know so bad. Why didn't you buy your own? Why are you looking at me like that for? Hmm? How dare you judge me? Guts and Braun got beaten yesterday, by the way. Anyway. Into the wireless. The wireless. The decadent young rascal in my day. It was one or the other. Read the paper or listen to the wireless. Oh boy. I'm using an earpiece. It's selfish, that's what it is. I was training my ears, but I couldn't catch any of it. Was he that desperate to listen to the radio? Tell me for that far. How dare you feel sorry for me? Stop throwing s at me. Then the serving girl in quest brought over the Javachino. You mean the waitress, who you only saw from behind, right? You're one of those, are you? You never let anything go, isn't that right? Maybe. What does it matter if I saw it from the front or from behind? My eyes don't lie. Keeps throwing seeds, but I'm gonna push it until I've got some hard evidence. Little Fidget picked up. Little Fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. His free hand? Yes. Which hand was that? Weren't you listening before? Cloth ears. I said he was rustling this paper with his right hand, didn't I? If his free hand wasn't his right hand, then which hand? Oop. 
Aha! Perhaps the great Mr. Trice has three hands. Yeesh, I was only asking. No need to gang up on me and treat me like a freak. The whole point of this cross-examination is to establish just one thing. To all guys' memory, has more holes than a slice of Swiss. You just need to find a contradiction in his testimony somewhere, huh? What do you do with one was... Cheese. God damn, that startled me. How are you doing, wild American? Your broken pair of spectacles. Newspaper right hand. And the nosy, nosy brat kept rustling its pages. He had the newspaper? Well, the newspaper was found behind it. Um. Well, that's not it. When suddenly, cheese. I think I also have a ham one. Um, the wireless. Does she know? I took the cup with his free hand and took a sip. Um, yeah, I was thinking the cup. Mr. Kudo, do you remember? Yeah, because. The handle's to the right, so you, and the lips are there. So yeah, remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? This is a way of testing the credibility of your memory. I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with the memory, I tell you. Nothing. If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. You to tell us where this is going, Trite? Going to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand, while drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make it that his left. Gah, what is this, kindergarten? I'd like the court to please take a look at this. And that's the cup the victim used, correct? Yes, and on the rim you notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there is a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see the victim is holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is awaiting for your epic performance. Did it eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song? Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where he came from. Wait! Oh no! Anyway! <laughs> if you think I'm going to stand here and listen to you, tell me I'm mad you're wrong. I don't care about that dirty coffee cup, I know what I saw. You still insist in your testimony? That young brat was holding the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question, I'm a good law-abiding citizen, I am. It's that dead young hot bot and you. What? A dead young hotbot in you, you spiky haired yahoo, who are at fault. You, me? Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but you're kind of bad shit. Sure, why not hear a little more? Mr. Kudo? This is my 16th cup of coffee. This is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor. At least he's eating the seeds. Why is he also drawn so unrealistically? The boy is wearing the earpiece in the same side Greenland respects. Kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup, too. He needs the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. Whether the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. What was the monocle, your honor? It was a small computer monitor often used by programmers for some ungodly reason. A monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an... Uh, I would say a HM... Uh, like a head-mounted display. An HMD sounds weird. I don't know. Language is weird. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. HGTV, DVD, CD, D... HHD DVD 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 player. If you remember that, please let me know in the chat. All of these newfangled letters drive me mad, but they don't matter. I know what I saw, and I'm telling the truth. It's true. It doesn't seem to be lying. Those were the facts in good old black and white. How are you, Asti? Let's pop a save. This is the um. This is the Allegro version.
you're you're a, you're a fed. You're a federal agent. Your piece on the same side, so it's left. The victim was wearing a HMD. That doesn't matter. It was none of them actually, but anyway. And you're sure that he was wearing the earpiece on the same side? No question, I can only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. Look at the floor plans. MMORPG DVD VHS DMV mobile game. Uh, what is DMV again? Pretty obvious. Look at the floor plans. On the opposite table, he'd only have a view of the side of the victim's head. He kept fiddling with it all the time. Was that... One second. Was that the ear... That... We can't tell. Was that the same ear that he had the cream in? Americans always complain about. You mean everywhere that's not America? Seems you kept an eye on Mr. Glenelg. He was getting on my nerves, rustling the newspaper and fiddling with his earpiece all the time. Then he went and made all that fuss of dying from one sip of Javachino. They said left here, yeah. I want to say to him, calm down, you young brat. Just looking at him made me suddenly speed up my seed eating. I could have choked. I think the victim was a walking ball of nervous energy. I think this is where he picked up the cup, too. The earpiece you mentioned. Which hand did the victim touch it with? You're one of those people, aren't you? You're the type that uses your left hand to get things out of your right pocket. Or fastens your left cuff with your right hand. Well, yeah, you do that. And when the tour guide said, on your right side, you'll see the famous blah blah, you're the one who deliberately looks left. Well, aren't you? No, I didn't mean. I was to use the hand the same size body that the earpiece was in. Ow, ow, ow. So if he had the HMD on his left side, then it was his left hand, I guess. The same hand to pick up the cuff, his left hand. You seem very sure of yourself, Mr. Kudo. Because I know what I saw, no matter what tricks you try to play on me. Looks like you really did see the guy picking the cup with his left hand. This is a dead end. Oh, well, Nick, what do you think? I think the guy is telling the truth, but even so, something's not quite right. I chuck evidence at him until he breaks. If he's not lying, there wouldn't be any contradictions in his testimony, right? Um. Effing with all the time. But even the just where he picked up the cup, too. And let's look at my evidence for now. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup, too. Uh, check. Um, hmm. Fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup. Same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. It's the same hand to pick up the cup, the left hand. Um. Hmm. What do I want to present? Hmm. Hmm. Can he read the autopsy? No. Um. Use the same hand to pick it up. Coffee contains potassium cyanide. Use his left hand. But he drank with us from his right hand. Um. Hmm. Left eardrum was ruptured. Anyway, just before he picked up the cup, too. What am I missing here? What am I missing here? What am I missing here? Um. Was it that he... His left eardrum was ruptured, so he was more like he was fiddling with his ear. Yeah. I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there is something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? 
You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, not a dash. I can only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. Through his left ear. Yeah, that's the, the, the right kind of thing. I don't think so. Well, what do you say? You know, I don't know where of this fact, Mr. Kudo, but the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right. It's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece on his left ear because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. P -p pigeon. Mm -hmm, pretty pigeon. Hey, at least he fulfilled his promise. Order, order, order. The witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the weight from behind, and he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when he knew you know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot? Arg. A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down, I know I'm right. He is zero drip. The lad drank his javachino with his left hand. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly, the victim used both hands. He took a sip of the cup, held in his right hand, and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Then we'd see the lips from both sides. Impossible. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. But also, again, there's only a sip from one side. Which hand the victim used to pick the cup is, is irrelevant, your honor. The facts still stand. With one hand or the other, Mr. Elg drank the poisoned coffee like this. <laughs> Sally, Mr. Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony will to establish whether the witness's memory is credible. And the results are clear. Objection battle. Yeah. The testimony given by this witness is useless. I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I'm satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court, but to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pomp pompous old fogey. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo. You can't reach me from there. <laughs> I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Oh, God. Wait. If we stop now, where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo? Thanks to that blue-suited young upstart over there, and there's a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's or cross his eyes now. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. I kept my mouth shut until now, but there's something else the court should know. Of course there is. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. But I want another chance, I want another crack at you, you young shark. Me? He's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, what do you say to one final showdown? The final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook. Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the javachino you want if you come to my house after the trial. Maybe 68 years old, but Victor Kudo is still a man. That's enough, Witness. I believe it'll be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. Much, much quicker. I can't believe this is happening. Ha <laughs> ha You better get ready, youngster. I get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? Dude is pretty rough for 68. Yeah. He's got to be using some sort of infinite ammo code with that box of seeds. First of all, I want to stress this might be nothing. I'm not too sure of myself. The young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his javachino. While the clumsy idiot upset the vase, he knocked it right over. It broke, and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? I'm not sure. Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. Hey, you're doubting me again? You're doubting a poor, defenseless old man? No, we're not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Do you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah, 
so what, probably. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. You're a bird brain, that's why that's all, all you can think of. Uh, excuse me? What did you just fucking say? I'll have you know that I was taught my class in bird school. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your final cross-examination, please. It's kind of sad when the final examination isn't Allegro. Suffers a microaggression. Um, the court generally prefers if witnesses are sure of themselves, Mr. Kudo. Noisy brat, I'm warning you, I'm more savage than a macho man right now. Macho man Randy Savage. Dig Ow. Ow. He's choking those seeds harder than ever. I better be careful. Come on, Nick. Nail him. Little table soon he took one sip of his javachino. The court has already heard that testimony, Mr. Kudo. I know that. I'll just head in the mood. How else am I supposed to build up the suspense, hmm? The suspense? Yes. Now, what do you think? Should I work the audience a bit more? No, no. Please continue, Mr. Kudo, as quickly as possible. Alright, now where was I? Ah, yes. The young boy slumped over the table and... Upset the vase. A vase, you say? Yes, there are vases on all the tables in that place. There are accidents waiting to happen. They're practically begging to be knocked over. Well, he's right about there being vases. I do remember seeing them too. But his was still up. There was a vase on the table when I ate lunch there. He saw the moment when the victim actually knocked over the vase. Well, it's hard to say. It's a bit unclear. How do you really define... Okay, I get it. I heard a break and the sight of it has burned into my memory as clear as day. It broke and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Soaked in water, you mean? Yes, it splashed me on the knee as well. But you were sitting at a table across the room from the victim, correct? And yet, the water still managed to splash onto you? It was cold, clearly remember it splashing me. Could the water really make it all the way across the other side of the room? It was upside down, not really. You mean, the vase on the victim's table falling upside down and breaking? The vase turned upside down, and my testimony is turning this case upside down. It's a joke, I just wanted everyone to hear it. What do you think, Captain? I'm impressed by your ability to waste time. Goddard hasn't raised any objections for a while now. Uh, so, you young show off, with that scrap of information, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. With this one, I'll take it like a man and admit defeat. Are you giving the evil eye, Maya? It's you he's looking at, Nick, not me. It's like he's saying, I triple dog dare you to find a contradiction, mother youngun. I guess I'll just have to rise to the challenge then. Okay. Hmm. Slumped over the table. He, he knocked it right over. Um. But it wasn't knocked over. I don't have... Yeah, it's this photo. I was wondering if I had a photo of the crime scene, I remember that. This is a photo of the crime scene. Hmm, so what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there, intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, Grandad? I'm not Grandad of yours, Hopscotch. Ow, ow. Enough. If there are any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here all night. Ah. Ooh, what is it now? I just remembered something. Yes. Go on. The broken vase? Uh huh. It was on my table. What? Ah, uh, well, you see. It startled me when that young lad collapsed, so I stood up. That must have been when it fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. The vase on your table? Ha ha ha, yes. It was on my table. And that's how my groin came to be completely soaked. Sigh. Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You certainly earned your kudos for today. God damn it, Judge. 
Or, I'd like to ask a question now. Have I, uh... Have I been any use at all? Something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh yes, I remember something else. Oh god. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me. I'll look at the court record in a second, Asti. Here we go. You seem to be considerably sidetracked. Um... The only wet patch seems to be from the coffee. Uh, I am still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony we have heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand, and the earpiece which was inserted into his left ear out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick, you did it. I therefore require both the defence and prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honour. Mm, dot dot, and a third, more ominous dot. There is one more thing before I call today's session to an end. One more thing, Your Honour. The witness we just heard from. He is most insistent that his testimony should be of use. So he summarised it accordingly into this statement. Um, okay. We each have a copy of it if you wish. Whatever. The prosecution... Whatever! The prosecution doesn't need props like that. God, that's really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies. My own, yours, Mr. Godot's. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> the incident occurred. I broke the base of my seat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This isn't a piece of testimony. More like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck has to do with three copies? Well, that is all. This court is adjourned. To be continued. Let's pop a quick cheeky save. Yes. Part 3, Investigation. So how do you think the trial went this morning? How do you think it went? It got a bit crazy in there, I just wonder if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. All we know is what old Mr. Kudo saw, the apron straps and the ribbon. And that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. Talk about a terrifying case of contra contradictionitis. Time to play doctor and find ourselves a cure, then, huh? Yep, yeah, you've got to find one for Maggie, or she's going to have a ter terminal case of guilty. Okay, let's. How about we just move the fuck away from that? Looks like Gumshoe's not here. Never mind that. What's going on? It feels different in here somehow. You think. Yeah, everyone seems to be on edge. What are you doing? Calling the officers for the briefing, quick! Can't you shut down the station server? Chief, quit playing on the internet. But my email pen pal, Lise. Lise. As an princess. Save it for later, I'm turning it off now. No, Lise as a princess. Lise Asian princess, oh, okay. Everyone's keeping busy in here, huh? Keeping busy, more like panicking if you ask me. Something's going on, something big. This will be the chief of detectives here. He looks lost. The power to his computer has been caught. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to write her a real letter instead of an email. Alternatively, you could write up some reports, just a suggestion. Dear Leet Asian Princess, how are you? I'm okay. How was the show last night? Uh, what an awesome job. Maybe I should send in my resume and become a chief. Okay. Let's go here. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. But, but we've got questions to ask her too. Maggie! Maggie! Keep it down, Maya. This isn't a playground, you know? Where's Edgeworth? Um, I don't know. He said, he, oh, he's out of the country. He's out of the country and left Godot to do the handle the cases. That's what we were told. And let's go to Trabian. 
Empty, as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime too. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, that sounds like... Now, <laughs> now just call an eight, pal. Come on, I know you can. He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number. Arg. Looks like an eight would have only netted me five bucks anyway. What a ripoff. Well, what's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, uh, ha <laughs> I was just, ha <laughs> ha I was listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is, he's having the, tw uh, the 20 set. <laughs> what can I say? This is a nightmare. How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? You already drove her into a corner, you know? You always blow apart my testimony. Why of all days didn't you do it today? This is sorry, there just weren't any holes in it for once. Yeah, what happened? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. This is Swiss cheese. Do you prefer crumbly like aged parmesan? Anyway, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So, did Maggie say anything to you about me, I mean? Well, um, how did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I hate him, sir. Mmm, cheems. Yeah, uh, something like that. Wah. Wah. Oh, now he's running away crying. Please, Detective Gumshoe, I didn't mean... Why? Oh, why? Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall, Nick. Oh, man. Poor Gumshoe. Chim... Chim it. So, did you like the 20 set? I never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. So, how did it taste? Well... For 20 bucks, I guess. I don't know how to describe it, really. It was... delicate. Delicate? Ask me to see it? Oh, yes. You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? Well, what's the matter with him? Looks like he's thinking. Th that's it. I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. I just realized. It's bad, that's it. It tasted bad. Sigh. It's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you paid 20 bucks for it, you know? Maybe you should have found out about the price after he had finished eating. Hey, Nick, maybe that's why Mr. Glen Ellen came here. Have you heard about the super fierce 20 set? If by fierce you mean fierce some, Speaking of Glen Ellen, that reminds me. We still hardly know anything about the guy. Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here? So what were you all excited about earlier? Ah, oh, that's right, you said you were listening- uh, That's right, you said you listened to the radio or something. Oh, that? That was nothing. I- I wasn't excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe. You can tell little old me. What were you listening to? N nothing. Really? It was just the, um, daily exercise show. Uh... What the? A psych lock? <laughs> hmm. This lunch special lobster sure is great. And why are there tears in your eyes? Uh. Let me guess. He has the fucking lottery ticket. The radio. Alright, Detective Gumshoe, tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you've made a big thing out of it, I'm not going to tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to... I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glen Elg did. It's... It's like you can see right through me. God, that was a simple luck. Huh? I've cracked him already. See, pal? That's why I said it was nothing. I'm sure the Magatama just picks up and random things. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. What's the everyone in the lottery? So, how did it go? I want... I want 50 cents. It'd better, it'd better be... It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad. Simple luck for a simple person. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> simple locks for simple people. Locks. By Gumshoe. Yeah, I know the feeling. 
I bought the same kind of ticket as Mr. Elk, see? And they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal. But that's what Mr. L was listening to on the day he was killed. Yeah, what uh yeah, what time is it now? Uh it's just after 1.30. And the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah, look, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. It was always called out at half one. Millionaire radio? That sounds cool. I would have tried, Nick. Then buy a ticket, Maya, with your own money. Um, apparently, everyone's into this show now. That's because everyone wants money. They, they said that the victim, Glen Elk, was really into gambling. Yep, you can't beat gambling. I love it too. I won $500 last night playing cards with Nick. Huh? We were playing for money? Of course. So you'd better pay up. You're a smart one, waiting for a cop to be present before asking for the cash. Never did find the contents of that bag. It was medicine for Mr. Elg's ruptured eardrum, right? Yeah, we found traces of it in his left ear canal. He must have used it while he was at Train BN. We're sure of that much. Uh, that's a nothing. Uh, that's the apron Maggie was wearing. Yeah, it still smells like her too. Does this mean Maggie smells like ketchup? A one-way ticket to happiness, huh? Then Elg died because of this ticket. Yeah, but it's still a one-way ticket to happiness, pal. <laughs> and Maggie was found guilty of murder because of it, too. Looks like anything about Maggie is an instant conversation stopper. Yeah, he's got a real soft spot for her, and it's obviously hurt and it obviously hurts when you hit it. And that's the nothing. A uh, crime photo. Okay, that's an. Oops, that's a nothing. That's a nothing. Nothing. That's why they got rid of the original one, so you don't want to have two of the same th thing like this. Well, they still have like both of the same picture. Half a million dollars, pal. That's some um, half a million dollar bills. What was the um in there for? Is there really that much money tied up in this case? I can't give you an answer on that, pal. Not without this case, not without this case, this file in front of me. But I'll tell you this. That Armstrong guy would have done anything for cash. He was desperate, you know? No, I don't, but I think I sort of get the picture. Hey, are you putting this up for sale, pal? No. Why would you want to bust it up screw like this anyway? Yeah, plus the seat's all covered in pigeon poop. Who cares? Who cares if it runs? That's all that matters to me. My phony is riding this bike. Maybe if I head back to the park, it'll be there again. I haven't gotten anything to say about that, pal. Just take it away already, please. I mean, twenty dollars on this has to be killing him inside. Also, yes, I am also deliberately dragging it out so he has to wait to see the kitchen. That's nothing. Okay, we already heard about this one. Come on! <laughs> what is it? Uh, okay, can't remember it. That's fine. Yeah, we already know that's real. Profiles. Uh, we already heard of that. Okay, let's let's move to the kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen, Asti. This is apparently a professional kitchen for a professional restaurant. <laughs> yeah, this is uh pink and not good. Thirty fire hazards at once, yeah. Let's just have the lace curtains over the gas range. Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. I'll be back next month. Oui, naturellement. I'll be waiting for you. 
If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. She threatening arson? There, mirror in the kitchen? Yes. No, I'll have everything ready, I promise. I love fire, you know. I love the way it crackles, hee hee hee. No, 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 stop it, I beg you. Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. Mais non, this is not necessary. You can trust me, mademoiselle. Talk to anyone, and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh no, you don't have to worry. You know, you worry far too much. The fact that he's in this much debt, having it burned down for insurance money, is probably actually the best way out of the debt for him right now. Maybe this will help you relax. It is the oil of sandalwood. I do love raw meat from time to time. The fuck is she? Ah. I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye for now. I have the shivers. I must rub some of my oil all over my body before I becomes a nervous wreck. There, oh wee oui, oui. that feels good. Erg. Oh la la, excusez moi, monsieur. My eyes, my eyes. Your eyes, if you have trouble with your eyes, you need this. The oil of sample wood. It's just the leftovers of what you were just using. Yep. Yeah. So, this is the chef. Uh, that's who we did a talking. You don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? No, you are right, monsieur. But perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, no? That way I can give you my undivided attention. I cook for you in a dish supreme. Putting on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. But you are right, business is very difficult these days. Our app is a name is the problem. People would not understand it. They think it is Trey. I just want people to think that my restaurant was exclusive. But well, they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays. Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Miss Maya? Uh, are, are we sure? But this restaurant is my life. It is everything to me. I will defend it to la finale. No one will take it from me. So who was the woman you were just talking to? Oh la la, you saw that? Ah, uh, well, yes, sorry. So, who was she? She looks so polite and graceful, and not murderous at all. Polite, graceful, and she likes raw meat and fires, right? Next month, yeah, we, we literally saw that a second ago. Now that I think about it... Hey, Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well, then let's show them a piece of evidence and see what happens. Um... Do we present... Do we present... The loan contract? So long as that paper exists, I am but a delightful angel with the broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. We oui, they kept harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them with what? Maybe in Sur, if I did not owe them the money, I would have refused. But my hands were tied. Please, why did you agree to help? Why did you agree to to help with them? No, I cannot say. If I tell you, that woman, she will slice me up and eat me with the salad garnish. It doesn't mean that he'll literally be sliced up and served with garnish. Well, I guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract. Am I right? Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. The woman who was here earlier, I take it that she's, um... Why has it come to this? What a tragedy. Suddenly, I find myself so deep in la debt. It is a sign of la bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, it is more of a sign of la bad, bad culinary skills. The woman who was here is a scary woman. She is from la loan office. A loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? We? Oui. Tender lender, it is called. Catchy name, just hearing it makes you want to borrow some money. Please, you must not borrow from them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? I'm like your whole monthly stipend, Maya. Hey, I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. 
The tender lender is the loan office you borrowed half a million from, huh? Wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. I am a weak woman. When I am upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Thanks to him loaning me la money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. I am like his slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. Um, who's this he? La... Tiger. The Tiger? Oui, he is the manager of the Tenderlander, a terrifying man. La big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of that battered old scooter he rides, I start to cry. Big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter. Um, this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh no no no, this man has a presence and most formidable personality. Although... So, he's half a million debt, and the dead dude won like half a million. Have I got that right? Yeah. Uh, he does have the spiky air, just like you. We oui, there's resemblance there, I suppose. Hmm. Sounds like this loan office is worth checking out after all. If you want to visit this tender lender, it is just beyond Vitamin Square. Hey, Nick. If you need money, I can loan you some, as long as it's less than three dollars. Um, thanks for the offer. Did you want to Vitamin Square, huh? Um... Move Vitamin Square... There's a scooter again. Hmm, I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? He went to buy another ton of bird seeds. I was hoping he wouldn't be here anyway, at least not for now. He said something like, I will not lose my business no matter what. Yeah. Besides, any more seeds today and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. Hey, check this out. I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you, otherwise you might be in for a shock. My phone must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine, a tiger loose in the city. You know, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a vast urban jungle. How spicy are the memes we can put in Discord, by the way? Uh, send me it privately and I'll say yay or nay. Uh, there is you, there is you. Uh, let me mute. Uh, let me mute. Test off for a second. Okay. Let's have a look. Uh, um, ah, that's fine. Everyone knows that I pour on me by now. Okay, back to the game. Uh, oh, don't worry. Someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Don't lose hope. I'm trying to pep talk me into calling my phony. Okay. LeBunk. Win through compromise. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Oh, welcome. Ingle. Talk about a creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. Vibe this place around it? Yeah. It's her. You're here to discuss a loan? No, not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly, please. Yeah, she's not horrifically evil. She's gone, just like that. Guess just have to come back another time. This is the perfect opportunity, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick. Let's take a look around, okay? Think it'd be okay? Of course. No one will ever know. Coffee. Ah! I'll leave it here for you to enjoy, quietly. Yes, thank you. Do not touch the desk, please. I'd like a solid gold desk. Nick, let's get out of here. Now she wants to get out of here? What's this? It's a punching bag. What? No way. You wouldn't catch me walking around with a bag like that. What do you mean, walking around? The design's gross to start with and is way too heavy to be practical. 
And why is it called a punching bag? Don't people know messenger bags are in? I knew it. I was right before. Back at Trey BN. Paris fashion is more my thing. I really, really hope he's putting my chain on this one. Oops. Win through compromise? I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Must mean something if they took the trouble to frame it like that. Yeah, well, it still doesn't make any sense to me. That. Ah. That's Tenderlender's guiding principle. Oh. Compromise the customer to win. Oh. Oh, I see. How about you, Nick? Yeah, um, well, as long as you don't have to compromise my hair, I'd say we're okay. That's one slogan no business owner should ever explain to their customers. Let's see, this round doll is called a Daruma, I think. Daruma Sandstorm? I figured you'd, I'd read a book or two and be more cultured in case you're wondering. I mean, you aren't making stuff up for a change? Eh, I bet you also didn't know that no matter what, he'll always write himself. Go on, Nick. Give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now, this yellow thing, this is a Japanese chess piece. I think it's called a king. Not that I'm an expert or anything, I'm more of a reversey person, you know? Assuming she knows what she's talking about, these aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Gulp. Hey, there's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. What is it? A repair bill? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Does he even have one? 15,000 to replace a bumper and a light? That's insane. The car is registered to the Cadaverinis? Like, that isn't fucking on the nose. Huh, it's not even at the Tiger's car. Why would someone else's repair bill be in the Tiger's office? Um... Hey, look at this Parisian style coat. It's so chic. Looks more like a pimp coat to me, because I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. This is the same color as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm, the same color as my suit? Ah! Keep your voice down, Maya. Nick, you've got to take a look at this. This is some okay. Ah! I'll just leave it here for you. Uh, yeah, sure. I am. Um, thanks. Just wait here quietly. Otherwise... Sure. Did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said. Yeah, sure. I have my eye on you. Only so I can take care of you. Understand? Yeah, she's fucking evil. Ah, I'm scared, Nick. So? What were you getting so excited about before? Look, on the lapel of the suit. And that's it. That's an attorney's badge made out of freaking cardboard. The tiger a lawyer? No way, look at this thing. It's made of paper. In a cardboard and painted to look authentic. Wow. For some reason, your badge certainly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why doesn't anyone recognize an obviously fake badge when they see one? Oh no, someone's dropped the ashtray on the floor. It's going to be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I actually knocked over a really big space heater once. Cleaning up was such a pain. There's one of those super antique... Super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did you manage to knock one of those over? Are oh, they supposed to be super heavy? Oh, hey. There's a book of matches here, too. Matches, huh? Blazes don't give those out much nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Look what's printed on its cover. It says Trabian. Uh, maybe I should annoy the uh, linguistic people in chat and call it Trespine. These matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah, the pilot light for the office border keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. Swing and a miss. There's a CD player on the desk, but the desk is so loud, it's a wonder you can hear it. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished the coffee? Ah! Yes, thanks. It was lovely. So, you drank it all? Hee hee hee. Gulp. If you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. Yeah, it's so obvious that she's the fucking poisoner. That coffee, it was laced with something, I'm almost sure of it. 
Nick, my stomach, it's killing me. Oh, wait. Maybe it was just a burger I ate for breakfast. Breakfast burger? I sure hope so. Better take a look at that CD while we're still alive and have the chance. What the? What? It's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw the Tiger? It's... it's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc and pen. Remember? This is how people used to share their, like, fire mixtape. They would have a CD that they would burn at home. MC Bomber. What? This be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's, let's listen to it, I bet it's heavy metal. No way, that woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. Oh, here he comes. Ah. I'm out from one of the desk, Maya. What are... What are you two snooping around my office for? Uh, nothing. We're just... My precious carpet. You've got ash on my rug. You're gonna wish your ugly feet never came through my door. It wasn't us. It was already like this. You just want to argue with me? Is that what you doing? You think you can take... You think you can take me on? It's actually difficult to talk like him. I'm gonna flatten you two into pancakes and turn you into my new rugs. Ah. Oh. Don Tiger, you're back. Ah, that voice is like evil seeping into your head through your ears. I'm sorry, Don Tiger. Don Tiger. I knocked over that ashtray earlier, and... Eek. Has she got a death wish or what? Oh, right. Huh? Forget about it, Violetta. It's not an... What, what, what? I ain't gonna get mad at you. You too cute, you hear? That's so unfair. Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Uh, Phoenix Wright. Yes. He's either crazy or just plain stupid to chase after me. I worked so hard, but now you've got to come and mess up my plan. So it was him. He's my phony. Huh, but I don't care. No one gets in my way. What? I mean, excuse me? <laughs> you should have left a little girl at home, right? Um, I have a few things I want to ask. W what the hell is he doing? No questions. This is the last time we meet. Ah, wait, please. That was pretty weak, Nick. Wait until he was out of earshot before you shouted after him. Like you're one to talk, I didn't hear you scream hold it either. The espresso. Ah. And cookies. This one was definitely not good for my heart. Now, what was it the tiger called her? Violetta? And with that, it is time to save and end the stream. Thank you, one and all, for joining me this evening. I hope you enjoyed. Let's see. Eh, fuck. Maple's around. Let's let's raid the maple. Everyone go and start calling him maple, please. And remember, you get more channel points for joining in the raid. So yes, thank you, one and all, for joining me. And I will see you tomorrow for more Phoenix Wright. Take care.